Yoshi and Mario are really good friends, and that's not surprising considering all the adventures both of them had together. Mario rode on Yoshi's back through countless of Bowser's dangerous stages. He raced against everyone's favorite dinosaur countless times. They know each other longer than Mario has a mustache, and I can't remember a single party where the two of them didn't show up together. But if the two are such good friends, then why does Mario kill his friends so often? Whatever the reason, it's time to teach Mario the basic rules of human decency. Today we'll take a look at three educational Super Mario Maker designs that hopefully condition Mario to drop his bad dinosaur killing habits, add a new entry onto a dangerous list of evil and hopefully save the dinosaurs from going extinct. Today we will discuss Don't Kill Yoshi contraptions in Super Mario Maker. So you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so in order to condition Mario into dropping his bad dinosaur killing habit, I identified the three most common ways for dinosaur homicide and defined therapeutic countermeasurements using the newest breakthroughs in science. So bad habit number one, dropping dinosaur into pit without bottom. My recommended treatment, drop ceiling onto head. Here Mario finds himself on top of his best friend Yoshi. Together both of them have to make it through a dangerous area filled with dangerous cannonballs, which try to end this friendship for good. Everything is fine and both of them seem to have a lot of fun until this area appears. Here a huge gap is in front of a brave dinosaur riding plumber. This pit is too large for a simple jump, so Mario decides to just jump off of Yoshi and drops Yoshi into the pit, which usually kills our dinosaur, but allows Mario to jump and run further, as if nothing had happened. But this time something happens, because this time the ceiling collapses a short time after Mario dropped his friend, which would cause Mario such a lethal headache that he isn't tempted to try it again. Hooray! Here we can already see our first signs of therapeutic success. This time Mari decides not to drop Yoshi, but to escort the cannonballs instead. These cannonballs make for some great platforms onto which Mari and Yoshi are able to jump together. If Mari decides to kill the cannonballs instead of Yoshi, the ceiling decides not to collapse and everything is fine. By the way, in case you're more worried about the health of the cannonballs instead of Yoshi's, we have a solution for this problem as well. So why does the ceiling collapse? Well, it's actually surprisingly simple. The bottomless pit actually has a bottom. If Yoshi gets dropped into this pit, then the conveyor belts carry him towards this contraption. A note block bounces Yoshi onto a spring. Onto another note block, this note block triggers a shell, which in consequence triggers this block, which triggers the P-switch, which destroys the ceiling at the top. Hooray! The second most common reason for mushroom dinosaur homicide I was able to identify is letting dinosaur aimlessly wander into abyss. My recommended treatment is transfer floor into shiny yet deadly coins. Here Mario and Yoshi find themselves in a horrific overgrown cave which is inhabited by tons of evil fire spitting plants. After a while one of these fireballs hits our best friend which causes Yoshi to understandably become pretty nervous. The correct behavior of our adventurous plumber in this situation would be to jump back onto Yoshi's back in order to calm him down. But instead Mario decides to act as if he wasn't riding a dinosaur just a couple of seconds ago and to proceed as if nothing had happened. Luckily soon Mario is confronted with a marvelous device. The Ya didn't kill the dino again, did ya? 3000, or short the Ya di kidi again, dia. This marvelous masterpiece of Goomba engineering reliably tests whether Mario enters on Yoshi's back or whether he dropped his best friend somewhere in the stage before. If Mario passes together with Yoshi, no floor, doesn't need to collapse. If Mario did it again, however, the floor disappears, which drops Mario into his doom. Once again, therapeutic success starts to happen after only a couple of disappeared floors. Now Mario is much more careful not to get damaged again and if he is, he at least follows the safety protocol and calms our poor dinosaur before he proceeds through this dangerous overgrown cave. After surviving three dangerous rooms filled with dangerous piranha plants, Mario and Yoshi are finally able to reach the exit door together. Hooray! So how did all of this work? Well, it's even simpler than our first design. We make use of Mario's point of calculation once again. If Mario rides on top of Yoshi, they're so tall that Mario only hits his head against this question block when hitting the note block. But he doesn't jump, because of this the anti-jump womp at the top does not trigger, because Mario's point of calculation stays at the bottom. If he's small, however, his calculation point moves upwards, which makes the angry stone face at the top wake up and leads to a disaster. Let's take a look at our 
final most common reason for dinosaur murder, dropping dinosaur into lava. The best solution in order to prevent such crimes from happening I was able to find is Crush. So hero Plummer rides Yoshi in the middle of one of Bowser's many many castles, but both becoming trapped in this minigame and have to survive until a hidden shell met timer expires. Usually Mario doesn't bother too much if his best friend dropped into lava and just happily keeps jumping around. Mario just isn't a very sensible guy, but he's about to become because once this little minigame ends, Mario finds himself in his room. If Yoshi isn't with him, the exit stays locked, but the floor awakens and starts to jump towards our not so innocent and plumber. If Mario manages to win the minigame without dropping any dinosaurs into lava however, then the exit opens up and the floor doesn't start to eat our friends. In the next room, both of them have to survive together again. Mario seems not to have learned his lesson yet, but that's no problem, because we have another Is Yoshi Alive test chamber hidden in the upcoming room. This time the floor does not decide to eat Mario if he lost Yoshi before but just straight up crushes him. But if the world's most infamous plumber dinosaur duo made it into this room together, nothing bad happens to no one. Hooray! The reason why the floor only crushes here if Mario is alone is because of Yoshi Egg trickery. If there are already two Yoshis on screen, then a Yoshi Egg spawns a power-up instead of a Yoshi. This power-up activates this note block which prevents this shell from triggering this power block. This happens if Mario enters this area on Yoshi's back and allows the exit to open up. If Mario enters alone however, a Yoshi spawns, the shell doesn't get blocked and the power block triggered. This destroys the exit opening bob bomb and the bottom line of munchers. Because because of this, these winged munchers are no longer in the middle of an enemy tower but at the very bottom, which causes them to flutter upwards and to crush. That's the whole trick. So here we have it, three designs for don't kill Yoshi levels in Super Mario Maker. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially like we just did Yoshi something good today and want the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!